Good to see everyone here. Uh, before we get into it, let's uh, be official and bow in. Attention. Salute. Us. Very good. All right. Well, as you know, I am Master Ken, creator of an 11th degree black belt in the most powerful martial art in the world. I have studied at over three dozen martial arts facilities in the past 17 years, and not one of them has been able to contain me. Name a martial art. Bullshit. <laughs> Name a martial art. Bullshit. Over the years of training, I realized that pretty much every martial art out there is bullshit because every martial art has a strength, but it also has a weakness. Which is why I decided to create a Maradote, which has the strengths of every martial art with none of the weaknesses. Which is why we like to say, best of all, worst of none. Say that with me. Best of all, worst of none. Best of all, worst of none. Good, you'll practice that at home. <laughs> Are you taking your notes, boys? <laughs> Through the power of the internet, I've managed to help approximately billions of people <laughs> across all eight continents which is why Ameridote is spreading throughout the world faster than a staph infection at a jiu-jitsu tournament. <laughs> Ameridote is about conquering your fears. That's why we all became martial artists, isn't it? Yes. To become strong in mind, body, and spirit, overcome our fears. I, I believe it was Miyamoto Musashi, the great swordsman who once said, to live a life lived in fear is to have lived life living fearfully. <laughs> and you have therefore lived your life living your life unlived. So before we get started, I want to tell you all to be responsible with what I'm about to teach you. Ameridote is incredibly powerful. I don't want you to use this unless you absolutely need to. I created Ameridote, and I don't even know how powerful it is. <laughs> we may never know how powerful Ameridote is, just like we'll never know how many colors are in a rainbow, or why the Japanese built the pyramids. <laughs> Before we officially get started, I want to thank Anthony Pillage. Thank you, sir. When he contacted me, told me he wanted me to bring Ameridote to the UK, I thought, wow, that takes a lot of courage for a man as experienced and respected as he is to admit that all the training he's done up until now is total bullshit. <laughs> I realize because I'm in another country, there may be a, a bit of a problem with the language barrier. So, uh, I, fortunately, I've worked with a lot of MMA uh, fighters, who, uh, many of which can't really communicate outside of pointing and grunting. <laughs> so, uh, if you become confused or you need additional instruction, uh, just go ahead and make this sound. <laughs> Try it again. Good. I'll, then I'll know you need help, okay? <laughs> That's our safe sound. I see a lot of different ranks here, uh, uh, black belt and brown belts and everyone at various levels of experience. I want to commend you all on, on your achievements in the martial arts thus far and invite you to the Ameridote family. And uh, as head of the Ameridote family, I now hereby demote you all to white belt. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we'll get you a nice, clean, crisp white belt. All right, go ahead and, and spread out a little bit so you guys can move together, if possible. Okay, does anyone here have a computer at home? Who has computers? 
Good, good. A lot of people, I'm glad those have made it over here. Uh, now, you notice when your hard drive gets full, you have to delete some files in order to make room for new information. The brain is the same way, and right now your heads are so full of bullshit that you're not going to be able to store a lot of Ameridote. The files are much bigger. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to delete some of the information. Uh, miss, could you, could you come out and help me for a moment? What's your name? Caroline. Caroline. Go ahead and take your uh, fighting stance. That's fine. <laughs> uh, show me a move, a kick, or a punch that you would normally do in your style. Good. What is that called? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Now, uh, in order to delete that, I'm going to need you to do that in reverse. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So that's what. That's. Let's all do that. Let's. Let's delete a punch from this bullshit martial art. Here we go. <laughs> Ready. And in order to do that, I think we're going to count, uh, we'll count backwards as well. Can you count for everybody? Go ahead. Ten. No, no, count backwards. Ten. No, backwards. Ten. There you they got it. Okay. Here we go. Net. Net. Enan. Enan. Feeg. Feeg. Nevis. Nevis. This. This. Eve. Roof. Roof. Eart. Eart. Out. Out. Eno. Eno. Good. Very good. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's have another. Uh, let's see. So who else knows another move? You know a move? Come on out here. Let's see a move. Show me something other than a punch. What would you do? Yeah, what is that called? All right, let's do a re now do it in reverse. Good. Okay, let's do that together. Here we go. Net. Eden. Feed. Nevis. I don't hear anybody. You're the ones who need to delete, not me. Okay, we'll go from five. Eveth. Ruah. Hurt. Yes. Out. Out. Eno. Eno. Good. Okay. We've freed up some information on the hard drive. That's good. So we're going to start with some basic Ameridote moves. The most recognizable and the most basic for you all white belts to handle is the tiger claw. Looks something like this. Okay. This is catching the punch here and this is removing the eyes. <laughs> Okay, it's good to do it at the same time if you can. Show it to you one more time. Everybody got that? All right, let's do it together. In fact, I'm just going to say tiger claw. That'll be your cue to do a tiger claw. Tiger claw. Good. Tiger claw. Good, let me watch that form. Go ahead. And Tiger claw. Good. Make sure that one's catching the punch. That's an important part of it. Tiger claw. Good. Make sure the one hand is in front of the other. Tiger claw. Excellent. Now that technique is fine. If you're fighting someone else. But what if you're fighting yourself? <laughs> That's why we created the reverse tiger claw. It looks something like this. Okay? Everybody got that? Ready. Reverse. Good. Reverse. Good. Reverse. Excellent. Show you another move I've been working on. Haven't officially released it yet. It's still uh, in the experimental stage. It's a move I thought of where you could uh, use your head to attack someone else. Call it the mountain goat. <laughs> okay. 
okay? Ready. Mountain goat. Good. Mountain goat. Good. Mountain goat. Very good. The last one in the sequence that I'll teach you is probably the most recognizable and the most important in all of Ameridote. Stomp the groin and then re-stomp the groin. Okay? Stomp the groin, re-stomp the groin. Okay? Let's do that together. Stomp the groin, re-stomp the groin. Stomp the groin, re-stomp the groin. Good. Stomp the groin, re-stomp the groin. Excellent. You gotta stomp that groin until there is no groin. <laughs> One more time. Stomp the groin, re-stomp the groin. Very good. Now to be honest, that's all you really need in a street fight. Uh, but we'll go a little deeper. I always tell my students that the best way to win a fight is not to get in one at all. Which is why I devised a technique that is meant to frighten your attacker to death before they even lay a hand on you. It's called the kill face. And what you do is you take all of your hatred, all your power, and you put it right in your face. Having a good kill face is like walking around with a loaded gun in your pocket. Only it's not in your pocket. It's in your face. <laughs> good. Now, uh, because my kill face is too dangerous, I can't actually demonstrate it for you. Uh, we don't have enough insurance for that. Uh, is anyone familiar with the technique of the kill face? Have you seen it online before? Raise the anyone? <laughs> Sir? Can you come up here? Come on up. Good. Good. Go ahead and face the audience, and when I, uh, when I say kill face, I want you to show them your best kill face. Ready? Kill face! Very good. One more time. Kill face! Yes. Good. Thank you, sir. Caroline, can you come up here, please? Go ahead and show us your best kill face. Ready? Kill face! That's good. Kill face! Good. Now, see if you can hold that. I know it's strenuous. I want to demonstrate, I want to describe why it's working. Okay, ready? Kill face! See, that's very good. Notice the intensity, okay? If you were as close as I am, you'd be able to see that every hair on her lip is trembling. <laughs> it looks like, I don't know why, but there's, it looks like there's at least a quarter inch of oil on her skin. <laughs> like she hasn't washed her face in a while, which is good, because it lubricates the kill face, makes it move faster. <laughs> a well-lubricated kill face will go through your opponent faster than Jean-Claude Van Damme can go through an eight ball of cocaine. <laughs> And with her jaw jutting forward like that, that makes her scarier than a silverback gorilla in heat. <laughs> Excellent work, Caroline. Thank you. So our first official partner drill, since you are all beginners, uh, I want you to find a partner, and we're going to kill face each other. Okay? <laughs> so go ahead and just face the person next to you. When I yell out kill face, you're going to show your neighbor your best kill face. Ready, set, kill face. Very good. Ready, set, kill face. Kill face. Kill face. Good, good, very good, everybody. All right. Now, Unfortunately, you may actually have to set your hands on your opponent at some point. They may be immune to the kill face. Maybe you're fighting uh, in complete darkness or at the school for the blind. <laughs> I'm going to work on a technique with you 
that is a little complicated for a beginner, but it's one that I'm asked to teach all over the world from people having seen it online. It's very popular. Uh, it's what I think the best defense is for someone sticking their finger out, putting it in your chest in a threatening manner. <laughs> Mind if I use your sir? <laughs> all right. Let's say he uh, sticks his right hand out, sticks his finger in my chest. Here's what you do. You're going to secure the wrist. Then you're going to break the finger. Break the wrist. Break the elbow. Break the jaw. Smash the groin. Break the nose. Sweep the leg. Break the ribs. Restop the groin. Knee drop the pelvis. Kick the head. Stomp the head. Stomp the back of the neck. Restomp the groin. <laughs> and exit out. Everybody got that? Good. Find a, par find a partner. We'll do the first one together so you don't get confused. Can I, can I use you to show everybody? So remember, when everybody, any, anybody sticks their finger in your chest, we're assuming that they're a psychopathic lunatic, OK? <laughs> So this lunatic puts his finger in my chest, secure the wrist, break the finger, break the wrist, break the elbow, break the jaw, smash the groin, break the nose, sweep the leg, break the ribs, restop the groin, Knee drop the pelvis, kick the head, stomp the head, stomp the back of the neck, restomp the groin, and exit out. Good. Good. Thank you. Good. Go ahead and work on that a couple more times. I'll come around and help you. Very good. Very important. Good. Perfect. Nose. Sweep the leg. Yeah. You're going to break the ribs. Stop the groin. And then you want to turn and knee drop the pelvis. And kick the head. Stop the head. Stop the back of the neck. Re stop the groin. Very good. Very good. Very good. Good. Stop the head. Good. Yeah, you need. Okay. All right. Just, just do the other one. All right. Okay. Break the finger. Break the wrist. Break the elbow. Break the jaw. Smash the ground. Break the nose. Sweep the leg. Break the ribs, stop the groin, knee drop the pelvis, kick the head, stomp the head, stomp the back of the neck, restomp the groin, and then exit out. You got it? Good, good. Okay, good work, everybody, good work. Now, at this point, we encounter a problem. Has anyone ever been injured in a fight? No. Voice hasn't. Anyone else ever been injured in a fight? What parts of your body do you use in a fight? Hands, feet, teeth. What happens if you break your hands or your feet or your teeth? Luckily, I devised a move that utilizes over 17 different muscle groups that you can use to defend yourself your hips. It's called the thrust of freedom. Now, because you're all beginners, uh, well, everybody face this wall. Put your hands on the, on the shoulders of the person in front of you, OK? Good, OK, good. Now, there are four major directions in the thrust of freedom. 
thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, thrust front, left, right, back, 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 front. Very good. Good. If executed properly, this technique can do more pelvic damage than Ron Jeremy in a midget colony. We have some. Uh, do we have some some kicking pads, sir? Some of the large oh, kicking please. pads. Yeah, let's grab a few uh, kicking pads and have people hold them. We're all going to practice the application of the thrust of freedom. Now I'll show you how to. Uh, I'll show you how to do this first, so that you understand. You mind holding a pad for me, sir? All right. So what are you going to do? Your partner's going to hold the pad. You're going to grab it securely. Okay. Just practice a little thrust. Okay? Thrust. Okay? You can even double up. Thrust. Thrust. Okay? Good. So let's just try, uh, wh what we'll do is we'll just try the front thrust and then we'll get into something more complicated. Okay? So everyone find a pad. Everyone find a pad and, and work on the thrust. Good. Some of, you, uh, some of you appear to have done this before, uh, but some of you clearly have not. Uh, so let's, let's have, let me get four pads up here. Let's get four pads. And we might as well do all four directions. So this, this is the way you're going to do it. Let me grab you for a second. Okay? So I'm going to say thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, thrust front. Okay? Ready, thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, thrust front, good, thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, thrust front, thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, thrust front. Good. It's important to remember that just because the thrust of freedom hurts doesn't mean it's not working. <laughs> thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, and thrust front. Good. Whoa. A lot of thrust there. Front one is always the most enthusiastic for some reason. Okay, good. Uh, now we're going to, we got to, let's, uh, before we work out a technique, based on the thrust of freedom. I will show you that as you become advanced in this technique, eventually you'll be able to take on two at a time. Attacker in back, attacker in front, thrust, 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 thrust. But that's a little advanced for what we're doing. So I'd like you to work on a technique. Uh, Sir, do you mind, uh, go ahead and, here's what we'll do. The partner off, go ahead and put me in a bear hug. <laughs> what you're going to do is thrust. <laughs> okay. Move to a certain position here, grab, take him down. Stomp. You can hit him in the head if you want. The main thing is to work on the backward thrust. Okay? So from a bear hug, go ahead and partner up. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Do I give him a heads up or not? Okay. And that technique works fine if they grab you from behind. What if they? What if they grab you from the front? Go ahead. Uh, 
just wrap, wrap uh, uh, front bear hug. Okay? Now what? <laughs> front thrust. Get a good base. Get in between there. <laughs> I know it's your first time, so I'll be gentle. <laughs> you gonna thrust? Turn? Side thrust. Okay? There's one more thrust I could do, but I'm gonna save that. <laughs> All right. So front thrust, side thrust. Okay? Try that. Thank you, sir. I want to see this one. You might be able to use this stuff. <laughs> Good, okay. Good work. Now, one of the criticisms that I get from the thrust of freedom is, sure, it works great when you're standing up, but what if you're fighting on the ground? <laughs> works just the same. In fact, it works even better. Let's say you're in side control, okay? Side control position. Take this hand, put it by the hip, shift over, <laughs> and thrust. <laughs> thrust. Okay? Another idea. Crossing the hand. <laughs> thrust. <laughs> thrust. Okay? Let's have someone try that. Caroline, come on over. <laughs> You may want to use this, Hoist. <laughs> no one would see it coming. Okay, ready. Okay, hand by the hip. Bring the hips over the head. That's, I mean, that's, some, that's, that's different. And thrust. Good. Very good. One more. Good. Good. You, sir. Come on up. Steph, Come on. we need you to do this. <laughs> Give it a try. Ready. Get into position. Thrust. Thrust like you mean it. Good. Much better. Much better. Who's next? Steph. Come on. All right. Good. Good. Mike, get down. <laughs> here, I'll walk you through it, okay? Hand by the hip. Hips over the head. Thrust. Yeah. Thrust. <laughs> Try a double. Thrust. Thrust. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Good. This, uh, this technique, if you perfect this at home, this will cause more damage than Steven Seagal at an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> now, uh, since we're on the subject of the ground, I don't, like, I don't like to fight on the ground. That's why Maradote has anti-grappling techniques. But I uh, had an idea the other day. It turned into a technique I'm pretty proud of. Mind if I use you, sir? Now, I see people end up in this guard position a lot. Go ahead and get into my guard. And it seems like people waste a lot of time uh, doing various things. Oma, uh, omapadas and uh, uh, various chokes and locks and things like that. I find it's a lot easier to just break the neck. <laughs> That's, I, so, I, so I just reach up and if you can just reach up and break it, he, he, it's easier to move him around. <laughs> So we'll start with that, okay? So he's in your guard. You're just going to reach up. Don't be careful, because if you actually do it, you're only going to be able to do it once. <laughs> we need to be able to practice it. So you grab him. You break the neck. Now, the great thing is, uh, like, loosen up your neck. Once his neck is broken, you can kind of move him around a little bit. His jaw is easy to open. So be careful. You're going to simulate this. You're going to reach inside down his throat and grab his heart, okay? <laughs> grab the heart and pull it out, 
Set it where you'll remember where you put it. Okay, because you're going to need it in a minute. We'll go ahead and do a, a kind of a standard scissor sweep here. Pick up the heart. Now, once you've ripped out a man's heart, it's yours to do with as you please. You can bite it. You can stomp on it. You could frame it uh, in those little baseball cases, you know, if you wanted to frame it. But what I like to do is to show it to him so that he understands what he did wrong. <laughs> It's like when a dog messes on the carpet. If you don't show it to him right away, he's not going to learn. So when you rip out his heart, it's important right afterwards to go, no! <laughs> no! Okay? Good. So let's try that. Neck break to the, to the heart rip, okay? Flip him over, and then no! All right. Partner up and try that. Thank you. Disappear with my patron. Good. Break the neck. Grab the heart. Set it where you'll remember. Good. Good. Very good. 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 Very good. Good. All right, good work, everybody. Good work. Good. Okay, we have two more sections to get through and run the low on time. I know this is a lot of material. Now, one of my major frustrations with other martial arts is how they seldom deal effectively with the issue of multiple attackers. Which is why I created another technique that, if executed properly, will make you equal to up to 10 men or 14 dwarfs. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> it's hard to believe, isn't it? It's hard to believe. The technique is called the hurricane. Now, I'm going to demonstrate a very low setting just to keep everyone safe. It goes from class 0 to class 5. I'm going to do a class uh, 0.05, just for a few seconds, just to give you the idea of it. But all the same, if you haven't seen it before, you might want to hang on to something. Uh, if you get the basic idea, let's have three people up here to demonstrate a hurricane. You, sir. Come on up. Cobra Kai. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. Make sure you have enough space. It's a dangerous technique. Ready. Set. Hurricane! Good! Good, very good. Let's have three more. Let's have three more. Three more up. You, young sir. Top ten. and You, sir, and uh, you really look like you want to come up. You were just looking at me like you wanted to come up here. Come on up. Ready. Set. Hurricane! Good, good, very good. Good. Let's have you, young lady. Come on up, young lady. I like that shirt. Let's go once you bring it. The, the jeans man. Yeah, yeah, come on up. And tap out. Let's see you tap out. Ready. Set. Hurricane. Okay, good. Uh, 
That last one we might need to practice a little bit. Yeah, you're getting it though. Good job. All right. Uh, so the final section. I guess everybody can go ahead and take a knee. Yeah. So one of the last sections that I like to convey uh, to people about Amerodote is about weapons. Now, obviously, it's impractical for us to carry a broadsword or a Tommy gun around. <laughs> <laughs> in certain parts of the country. Uh, and so we have to learn to turn normal, everyday items into weapons. So what I'd like to demonstrate for you is how to turn uh, something that seems harmless into, into a weapon. Can I use you, sir? Uh, is there a, uh, a book bag or a purse or something that I can... Uh... Oh, great. Good, that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> credit card, perfect example, something that could be turned into a weapon. Okay, uh, let's see, what's your name? George. Oh, George, you're the birthday boy. Yeah. All right, happy birthday. Uh, so go ahead and just take a, a punching position, okay? Credit card can be used, slice the radial, okay? Slice the brachial, okay? Slice the cornea, the jugular, you can cut off a nipple. Okay. If I manage to get behind him, well, there's actually a slot right here. This actually fits really well. If you want to cut this all the, all the way down, that's good. Good, good choice. I'm glad that's, that's good. Uh, what else could you use here? Let's see what else she's got. Oh, yeah, okay. I got a phone charger. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you use it like a mace, okay? <laughs> Hit him with it. You could catch his, uh, catch his leg, okay? Wrap around like Batman. Uh, could, could wrap around and choke, right? Not a bad idea. Let's see what else. Oh, here, here's a great example. What about your average everyday back massager? <laughs> Scarf. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. This is good. This is good. No, no, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's because this is rigid, I can get a good grip on it. Okay? It's got a hard tip to it. It can penetrate. Use to penetrate the solar plexus. Penetrate the groin. You get behind him, penetrate the tailbone. Right? But what if he gets it away from me? What if, what if he gets my, that's okay. What if he gets my weapon away from me, okay? At some point I need to, I need to re, regain it, okay? And I'd bring him down to one knee, kick his leg, bring him down to one knee. You could wrap him, put him in a secure position, use this to open his mouth. It's all right. All right? Use this to obstruct his airway. <laughs> no? Just a little bit? <laughs> All right. You're being a good sport. <laughs> yeah. It's good to carry something like this in your purse. Thank you for carrying that. All right, well, that's all the time we have for Ameridote today. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. This is my first time in the UK. I hope I get to come back. You are uh, fantastic students. You all handled your, uh, handled, uh, your surrender to Ameridote very well. Uh, let's go ahead and stand up and bow out, and then we'll do pictures. If anybody wants to do pictures from Facebook and, and whatnot, we can certainly do that. All right. Great job, everybody. Attention. Salute. Us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. Thank you.